Hello folks and welcome back to Final Fantasy 13, Final Fantasy 13, Final Fantasy 7. There you go, I've done so many videos uh, on Final Fantasy 13 too that it's confusing me. And I'm actually recovering from a little bit of a cold, so that's why there haven't been any videos for the past few days, I do apologise. It's getting to that time of year again. Now expect the first part of this video to be mainly story rather than uh, battling foes. That was one of the things with Final Fantasy VII. You had a section where you'd go around killing things and grinding levels and whatnot, and then you'd have quite long story sections in between. So that's sort of been changed a little bit the later Final Fantasy games. Uh, everything sort of merged together now. And there's nothing down there. You can't go through there. There's a sign here which you cannot read. And to progress the story, you need to speak to Barrett. But... You can explore this in as well if you want. Well, it's not actually an inn, it's more of a shop. A weapon shop. We don't need to buy the assault gun for Barrett since we found a weapon for him earlier. Although you can buy two iron bangles. Make that three. Uh, I'll tell you why you buy three a bit later. I don't want to spoil anything for those who haven't played. But, yeah, we don't need to equip them just yet either, since we're not going to be fighting. Yeah, we don't need to rest up either. <laughs> we upset that guy. Yeah, some of the dialogue in this is a little weird. We can go into uh, that little place later. And if we go to the top floor, then we enter that guy's bedroom. Why would we want to do that at this moment? I do not know. But that is what happens, so. Right, we should be able to come into this shop here. At least I thought we could. Maybe it's not open yet. It has been a few years since I played this game, so I am going for memory. But... We'll speak to Barrett now and progress with the story. And we get introduced here to Tifa. A character with a legendary status in the Final Fantasy universe. Even though, of course, Tifa only appears in the Final Fantasy VII franchise. Again, you can either upset Tifa or keep her happy. Remember, the points you get, the secret points, you can't see what they are, the game gives you depends uh, on how a scene happens later on. So we can be mean and give it to Marlene, or we can give it to Tifa. Just drinking my tea. And if you try and leave, Barrett comes running in. So basically, Tifa runs this bar, the seventh heaven, and is also part of the rebel terrorist group known as Avalanche. And you can go straight down there, or you can speak to Tifa for a little bit more info. At least I think you can. Give me something hard. Thank you Tifa for the invisible drink. So Cloud is ex-soldier, soldier 
being an elite fighting force for the government. Although we'll go into a lot more of that later when the game permits us to do so. Okay, so that's the little bit of story we can get from Tifa. Now we can uh, proceed down safely. Network is called Sin, that's interesting. So, yeah, like I said, Cloud's a little bit cocky. I mean, that's how we all love him. It's a bit frustrating that his personality did seem to change to far more emo, uh, a far more emo version of Cloud. In some of the later episodes of the Final Fantasy 7 franchise. Right now Cloud's definitely got the I don't care about anything attitude. So he is a borderline tosser, but he has his reasons. And yeah, I'm sorry I forgot to talk to Jesse and the others. They might have had something fun to say. Should we be nice? Yeah. I don't know how you can be nasty to the girls in this game. And now we get a little bit of backstory. With some sad little music, Tifa music in the background. This scene takes place in Nibelheim, which is Cloud and Tifa's hometown. And a place we get to visit later as well. Cloud's cut his hair since then by the looks of it. It's still mad and spiky, but he hasn't got a dopey ponytail. And that is the first mention of the legendary Sephiroth. If you don't know who Sephiroth is, then, well, you probably haven't lived. So yeah, it's cheesy, but hey, it's video game cheesy. It's parts like this that work because there's no voice acting. If there was voice acting, I think this would just be terrible. Yeah. 
Here comes Barrett. Look, he doesn't need to use the lift. Fifteen hundred gil. That barely buys a couple of potions. Yeah, that's Barrett for you. Using his daughter's schooling money for terrorist activities. Okay, so we've got a little bit of backstory on Cloud. Antifa, they were childhood friends. Grew up together in Nibelheim and Cloud left a few years ago to join a uh, soldier. But now he's back and with Avalanche. Okay. I'm going to skip that because we know how to use materia. And the tutorials in this game are really sluggish. You probably want to do them if you've not played before. The materia system in this game, the magic system, uh, it's actually one of my favourite systems in a Final Fantasy game. Some people say it feels a little bit ancient now compared to the like Final Fantasy 13 and Final Fantasy 13 too, and yet it does. But for its day, it really was a good system, especially if you compare it to Final Fantasy VIII, which came after this game, that used the draw system, and that was, without a doubt, terrible. It really, really was. The draw system in Final Fantasy VIII was probably the worst magic system I've ever seen in an RPG. Don't get me wrong, I love the game Final Fantasy VIII. But for me, the draw system, it just killed any re replayability. I just had no motivation to play through that game more than once. Because basically you had to spend... What's that save point doing? Basically you had to spend ages drawing magic out of your enemies before you could use it. And even when you've done so, the game basically encouraged you not to use the magic because it was tied to the stat system. So it, it just really wasn't a very good system at all. Okay, more tutorials. I'm not interested in those. But yeah, if you need to know anything about the game, you can come to this little room here. Tents are quite useful in this game. They're an item you can use only at a save point or on the world map, which we don't yet have access to. And they recover your party to full health magic points and remove status ailments. The reason why I do this little bit of tutorial is that somewhere around here there is actually it's nothing to do with that but somewhere around here is a treasure chest. Uh, it's here. You see the all materia, that's the main reason I come up here. And there's the treasure chest. And we'll save our game. You don't need to save here, there is another save point that we used earlier. Before we go on though, I'm just going to very quickly sort out some equipment. And that's why we use buy three iron bangles, since we now have three characters in our party. And either on Cloud or on Barrett, can equip the all materia. All only works when the materia slots are linked like these two here. And it basically affects the materia it's linked to. So if we link all with lightning or ice it will cast lightning or ice on all the enemies in a group. You can also link it with the restore materia to cure everybody in your party. But for now I think we'll link it up with lightning on cloud. We'll let Tifa have uh, heal ability, restore, cure, and we'll give ice to Barrett. Yeah, I think that's the way we'll do it. 
Yes, I don't need to know this again. Please don't tell it to me all. Ah, oh, I've got to go through the whole thing again. Right, let's go. Ah, so I'll double check this guy doesn't have anything to say. Yeah. He just gives us some more tutorial options. For now, we'll leave this area and carry on progressing. We'll just head back the way we came. And we are now prepared to go on our second mission. For which we need to catch the train. Okay, this is just strange. Okay. I don't think anything else needs to be said about that. <laughs> that dude was on the train earlier with us, wasn't he, I think? Yeah, as you can see, there's a lot of swearing in the original dialogue, which has been blanked out for the PC version. Especially coming from Barrett. Okay, so this is where the security checkpoint comes in, which we saw earlier. I mentioned that it would have a part to play. Our fake IDs are now not working. Which means that we can only use the train for a certain amount of time. Yeah, that wasn't quite three minutes, but hey. So now we're going to be on a time limit. And... Even though you're on a time limit, you have time to talk to some of the passengers which will give you extra rewards. You will have to hurry through the dialogues like that. I had to hurry through, but we did get a phoenix down for it. You don't get anything off everybody, of course. Okay, we've got three seconds of time to move, but we did get a nice high potion out of it. Basically they've checked the last two cars, they're going to be checking them down sequentially until all cars have been checked. Which means we cannot stay on this train for long. Oh, the bastard has nicked our gill. There we go, we've got it back. And let's go to the next car. Talk to everybody. We need to collect, so we'll move on. 
and I think this is the last one and with no time limit either and oh don't those passengers at the front look shit today yeah you don't want to be too happy with that compliment Ok, we've done about as far as we can get on this thing. Ok, so now Cloud, Tifa and Barrett are off the train on the rails. Apparently that was as planned. And we're now heading to the next reactor, which is just down this tunnel. I think you can go backwards to collect some rewards. I could be wrong, it could be a wasted journey. If not, at least we'll get some experience nonetheless. And I'm pretty sure that new party members join you at fixed levels, so even if your character's a higher level, then new party members, it won't affect new party members, which means Tifa probably needs a little bit of levelling. Okay, she's got cure. Ugh. Wow. The controls a little bit sensitive, actually. I just ended up wasting Cloud's move. And I really wanted to cast uh, Bolt all. By the way, the damage when you use an all spell is split. So you do do a little bit less damage than if you target it against a single uh, mob. But here we go with our new all spell. And it does the job just fine. Tifa is a couple of levels behind. Now we do come back to uh, an area very similar to this much later in the game. And I cannot for the life of me think whether it is now or later where we collect extra items by going backwards. Oh! This game wasn't really made for an analogue pad. Probably just start using uh, attack with Barrett for now anyway. And the good thing about the cure materia or the restore materia is you can use it out of battle as well. So if we just go to magic, go down to Tifa, then we can use that just like that and bring her health back up to full. Yes, it is basically running through the same tile set over and over, a fixed number of times. And no, we cannot go any further, that's annoying. But at least we've got an extra couple of battles in. As I mentioned before, and as you've probably noticed by now, battles are completely random in this game. There's no way to... Uh, really avoid them apart from using a materia later on which we'll come to when we get it. Tifa's limit break works differently to all the others in the game in that it turns into a kind of slot machine and as you upgrade her limit break you don't actually stop using her older limit break which is interesting. It'll all make sense later as we do it. Right, they should be uh, 
quite susceptible to bulk since they're mechanical enemies, and they were. Which is one of the reasons why I use the lightning materia to be paired up with all. And we'll just do normal attacks on Tifa and Barrett to finish off anything that doesn't get killed by Cloud. Which is nothing. And Tifa has her first level. Of course, each time you level, you get an increase to all your basic stats, health, usual thing that you'd expect in an RPG. A very traditional leveling game, this is. Right. So we have to wait for these to go through the rigor wall of casting seal. One thing that I have noticed, which is nice, and something I would expect, is there seems to be no loading times for the battles. I remember on the original PlayStation version, you did have to wait about 4 or 5 seconds after the battle twirl, before you actually entered combat. It's just a quality of life improvement, which is nice. And we are where we need to be. So we can't go any further down there, but we can, however, go down this small hatch. <laughs> Ether, ethers restore your magic points. So there's a lot of uh, pre-rendered backgrounds in this game. This was the first 3D Final Fantasy game, by the way. And hopefully we'll be able to kill all these with a single hit from Cloud's Bolt. Let's see what happens. Oh no, these things are hard. The enemies can no longer be one shot. Barret is best when you're casting enemies at the back of the pack, since his weapon is ranged. Let's just throw Cure on Tifa before we continue, since she's starting to get a slightly lower health. And we can speak to Wedge right here. Uh, I do seem to remember there might be an item up here, so I'm going to double check before we move up the other ladder. Any time today. There is an item, I'm not sure it's supposed to be here just yet though. And we've got some new enemy types here. If we get bulk cast first, then we know that Barrett and Teeth's attacks won't be wasted. Why I skipped ahead of them. Two things at the front should definitely be killed, and yes, we've done the of course, so that was easy enough. I do try and like to get through battles as quickly as possible so that we can move on. Maybe we were supposed to come up here, I don't know actually. Ah. 
try pressing the opposite way. That's better. You have to press up, not down, which is bizarre. Wedge did say we needed to go up there, so... I do recognise the area we've just been to, so I know we have to go there at some point. Which is why I'm not too fussed about exploring getting right this moment. That's them taken care of. Oh, by the way, when you're at that shop that we was at earlier, it might be an idea to buy a tent. Since there's a save point coming up, and it would be nice to use one if we had one. Ah. Okay, so that's where we just were. And there's the save point. In fact, there's the tent. Don't use it at this save point. I'll tell you the best place to use it is before the before a boss we have coming up. But we'll save our game. And I think we'll leave things there for this episode. So we'll continue on with this reactor next time. Uh, until then, thank you very much for joining me. I've been Fuzzfinger. And I hope to see you in the next episode. Bye for now.